What's up guys, it's Thursday, February 9th, and this is Newswave. So the first bit of news comes to us from the world of VR, and Microsoft has actually unveiled a new VR game, and this is gonna be for Oculus and Rift and everything for Windows. I assume it'll also come to Scorpio, but we'll see if that's even VR compatible. So they're doing a new VR game, this is coming from Human Interact, it's called Starship Commander, and the trailer was interesting. They showed it off two days ago, and it kind of shows, of course, your, your flying around in a, in a starship. It's pretty straightforward with the title, but they did show that your voice actually has an effect on what's going on. So you can talk to aliens in space and you can decide if you want to fight them or if you want to befriend them or trade with them. And it looked like as people were saying, different things, phrases, stuff was actually happening on screen. So you would say, uh, yes, I would like to form an alliance with you or you know what? No, let's just fight. And the game would interact with that. So I don't know if this is going to be something that is reliant on a microphone and you do voice commands or you just use a controller and the people were just acting it out as they did it with a controller. It's hard to say. Again, this just aired two days ago and we'll still need to know more news about it, but it is good to see that Microsoft is coming out. They are coming out with more games at least because their year coming up looks pretty bad in terms of exclusives. This could be nice for their Windows 10 and then possibly Scorpio in the future. So they must have heard me at some point. I mean, I've been talking about how fans I, w I was hoping would eventually get invited to E3, but they're going to be selling 15,000 passes for E3. They're going to go on sale February 13th at 12 p.m. Eastern or, or 9 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. And they're going to start at $149 for the first thousand. The next, well, the rest of it, I guess the other 14,000 be $249. And and the passes will let you get into E3 on the floor so you can try all the new games they're showing off. And then there's going to be special events like panels, discussions at LA Live. And it's going to be, it's it's good. I'm glad they're letting fans back there. I think they will get better interest from the crowd when someone's presenting. You won't have just bloggers and people for websites sitting there typing. You'll actually have probably people cheering for different things on stage. I mean, if there's Nintendo fans there and you get a new Metroid, they'll cheer. If, if Microsoft, you know, Xbox fans are there and you get a new Halo, they'll cheer and so on. And so, you know what? I think this is good overall. I'm hoping we see something like Kingdom Hearts there because I think that would get a very good reaction from the crowd. But at least we can finally go back to E3 if you really want to. Some people may find it boring. It's actually a lot of fun. So I would like to go at some point. I don't know if I would want to buy tickets and then fly to California and do all this. It would probably be extremely expensive. But it seems like it would be kind of worth it. And guys, we got some interesting news yesterday. It looks like Castlevania is actually going to be turned into an animated series, and it's going to be coming to us through Netflix. It looks like it's going to be a full series. They actually announced that this year, Castlevania Season 1 Part 1 is going to be showing up on Netflix. They haven't given us an exact date. Just at some point this year, we'll see it. And each episode... Apparently, it's going to be 30 minutes long. And according to the description, it's actually going to follow the Belmont clan as it follows the last surviving member of the disgraced Belmont clan trying to save Eastern Europe from extinction at the hand of Vlad Dracula himself. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised that we haven't had a Castlevania uh, series like this done on a streaming service. A lot of the streaming services like to take chances on different things just to try to pull people in. Of course, we saw Voltron come back, things like that. I'm surprised it's taken this long, but it's cool to see a franchise like this maybe get some new life in an animated series on Netflix where there's no commercials and you could be a little f more free with the content on there. It doesn't have to be necessarily censored if it's online. So, that's great. You know, you don't have to worry about TV censors telling you you can't do this or that. You can just do whatever you want on Netflix for the most part. And if you're a fan of the original Project Cars, you'd be happy to know that Project Cars 2 was actually announced and should be due out at some time this year. They're saying at some point in 2017, we'll see it show up. No actual release date is given yet, but it will be coming out for the PS4, the Windows computer, obviously, and the Xbox One. They did give us a few details about it, though. There are going to be 60 tracks and over 170 cars to race with, including some of the bigger ones like the Acura NSX and the Nissan GTR or GT3. I'm sure there's people out there who know a little more about that than I do. But, of course, if you remember the original Project Cars, it looked very good graphics-wise and everything. It also took a pretty strong computer to, to run it at max settings. Uh, Project Cars 2 will probably just build on top of that, so if you're a racing fan... Be happy to know Project Cars 2 is coming out later this year. And in a recent interview with DualShockers, Mr. Hajime Tabara from Square Enix, who develops Final Fantasy and everything, obviously, had some interesting stuff to say about the possibility of Final Fantasy 15 being on the Switch. And when the possibility of the Switch came up in conversation with DualShockers, this was the conversation they had. Is there any possibility for Final Fantasy 15 to be released on the Nintendo Switch? 
there are no plans, it wouldn't run. That was an interesting thing to say because in the very next question, they said, it wouldn't run at all, it might run, but we haven't conducted the proper tests on whether it would run properly on the Switch or not, so I cannot say for sure. After that, they went on to say, so there's no plan at all. There are no plans for Switch at the moment, but overall there is interest in the platform among the development team. It's a really weird back and forth because at first he says it wouldn't run, and then he quickly says we have not tested it, but it might run, it might not run, we, we don't know. So I don't really know why he jumped to, right away to say it wouldn't run. I assume he means that it's not ported or it would need to be ported, possibly with obviously possible visual downgrades, considering the game has a hard enough time running on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Moving it to the Switch may be harder for them to do. It's really hard to say. They probably have not even tried it. I think right now, Final Fantasy XV, they need to focus on the DLC. Definitely, that's the big thing. The stuff that they've promised people they need to put out. And then they probably want to start porting it to the PC, just because I think Final Fantasy XV would do really well on the PC and I think would look really good running on like a really nice, strong video card like a GTX 1080. Also, I don't think they would make a ton of money putting it on the Switch, considering the Switch isn't even out yet. So they probably wouldn't even port it till next year. And at that point, Final Fantasy XV is kind of old news. While it's still a good game, it's still, uh, you know, last year's thing. And they want to probably push out the newer games onto the Switch that they are in development right now. And we got word that Puyo Puyo Tetris is coming out for the PS4 and the Switch on April 25th in the United States, and that is going to add another game for the Switch in April, which is obviously a month that it does need good games. It has Mario Kart, has a few others, but April is going to be a big telling month for the Switch, so they can keep the momentum going into summer, and then you'll get E3, and then more announcements, and more excitement. But I think April is going to be an important month. That It's a very fun game. Puyo Puyo is kind of like if you've played uh, if you've played Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, for example, where you try to uh, devastate your opponents by making all these combos, sending over bricks, and just try to fill theirs up while you're trying to keep yours from filling up. And it's a lot of fun. They have that and Tetris. You switch between them. It's, it's, it's a great time. It's a lot of fun. And it's actually coming over to the Switch and the PS4. Not the Xbox One, strangely. I'm not really sure why Sega is not doing that, but... It's another game for the Switch and a game for the PS4. And guys, if you missed it, a popular YouTuber by the name of Captain Nintendo Dude is actually waiting in line right now for the Switch. Maybe not right now. I think the Nintendo America store opens at like 11, but he's waiting there. So what happens is while the store is open from open to close, they wait outside. And by they, I mean he's there with Triforce. If you don't know what Triforce is, he is a gentleman who has been the first in line for things like... The 3DS, the Wii, the Wii U, basically all the Nintendo's consoles that come out at least in the last 10 years or so, he has been in line first. And he's talked about passing that torch on to the younger generation with Captain Nintendo Dude, and he is there waiting. He's going to be waiting from February 1st all the way up to March 3rd. At midnight, I guess, March 2nd, going to March 3rd when they open at the Nintendo of America store. He's going to pick it up, and I would assume go home and play it. But he, he's... He, I mean, it's tough, you know, because he's going to be waiting outside for 30-something days, so uh, hats off to him for that. It's not easy to do. If you watch any of his video logs for that, it does not look like it's the most fun thing in the world because you're just waiting, basically. But they have queued up. The line won't start officially as they, until they get closer. I think they said it would be like a couple days before launch that they would actually start an official line. But they're at least queued up, and he looks to be the first one to get a switch and we finally have a release date for the long-awaited siberia 3 it's going to be coming out april 25th of this year so a couple months it'll be out uh that's only so far for the xbox one the ps4 and the pc that does not include the switch currently now it does not mean it's not gonna come out that day for the switch it just means they have not announced it for the switch yet uh that could change in the next couple days it's also possible that it will have to come out a little later on the switch because they started development later uh, to make sure it can be ported over and corrected for the system on the portable unit as well as the home console unit again it's coming out april 25th so if you're looking forward to that not too far away and guys our last bit of news comes from the ever-growing world of pokemon red and blue exploits that's right Pokemon Red and Blue have a ton of bugs and glitches and stuff that you can use. Obviously, everyone knows about the missing number uh, glitch where you can actually multiply items like rare candies. Well, in this case, a YouTuber by the name of Crystal with an underscore at the end figured out that you can actually corrupt someone else's save game through a link battle. So what happens is when you link up with a friend, if you have a Pokemon that has the Cool Trainer exploit, which means that there is no, uh, no move in the first slot, so you can pick it, and it will just throw random moves at the at the other person what happens here is when it actually hits it will then 
stop the game, it'll just crash, and there's a chance that the saved game on the other person's Game Boy will corrupt. And the way this works is if you're hosting the game, basically you have it, and then the other person kind of comes in and you know sits down and you guys battle. What happens is your game is copied to theirs, and they're then using your information mirrored, essentially, just with different Pokemon on the other side. So when your game crashes, their game crashes, and it, there's a chance, depending, again, there's a chance, it's not every time, that the other person's game will just be erased. And they displayed it perfectly on screen here. You can actually see it behind me. I will leave the link to the actual video in the description below. I am so happy that nobody knew about this way back in the day when Pokemon Red and Blue was really big, because if I was getting my games erased randomly by someone, I would just battle i'd be really annoyed because there's it's not easy to stop it they said the only way you can really stop it is if you are proactive about it and turn your game off before it freezes so before the move hits and finishes you can turn your game boy off and stop the save from being erased otherwise that's basically just obviously dirty play on the playground when you're trying to play pokemon uh if somebody does not like you they could probably figure out a way to erase your game just through battling and guys that's it for news wave today let me know what you think about all the topics we talked about today in the comments below whether it's final fantasy 15 on the switch if you think it's ever coming if you don't really care if it's not going to affect things let me know what you think about that down below maybe you're looking forward to the new castlevania series on netflix or even maybe you're going to e3 now because you can you just have to buy a mildly expensive ticket and figure out how to stay in the area with all the hotels probably booked but let me know what you guys think down below i will see you next time